Hey everybody, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Up right hand corner we have Barcode Zerg, which I'm just going to refer to as Barcode. Serves you right. If you're going to put the barcode up, I can't give you shout outs on the random cats I get out in the ether. Uh, bottom right hand corner we have Urbmon, and I'm really highlighting Urbmon with this particular cast. He is really fun to watch in my opinion, particularly his EVZs. He plays to have fun. He is a 420 friendly stream, FYI, if you're really into that sort of thing. If that is your digs, go check it out. And yeah, he'll play UMS sometimes, but uh, really his ZVZ in particular, and just his general play, he plays for fun, which oftentimes you don't see out of streamers, and he's just a joy to watch in my opinion. Really quick though, I want to give a shout out to both Navi and Paul Hoke. Hopefully that I'm pronouncing Hoke right, and it's not Hokey. Um, you never know. But uh, yeah, I have donations, which means I'm going to keep doing this for the time being. So that's good motivation out there. And special shout out to Navi in particular. The leading contributor and the first. But yeah, Paul, you too. Thanks. Also, everybody keep an eye on Artosis because he is going to try to attempt to get broadcast rights for ASL. I'm hoping to support him in that effort. And also, let me know how the audio balance is on this. I tried to mess around in OBS. I'm using OBS Studio to do the background recording. And hopefully the background audio is catching more of the Zerg action. It's very loud, actually, in my headset, but we'll see. Overlord's passing in the night. With the spawn positions, it's going to be slightly advantageous for Urbmon. Should he go Mutalisks? And I say, should he go Mutalisks? Because, again, Urbmon will do crazy different stuff, particularly ZVZ, all the time. I've seen him go Hydralisk. He just plays for fun. Um, but, looks like we're seeing a... Uh, by the way, we're seeing an Overlord plus 12... Um, something on 12 build for both of these guys. Actually, it might have been 11 from Barcode. I should have been paying closer attention instead of talking, but we're seeing an inside hatchery from both players. This is Ringing Bloom. The positions, assuming Mutalisks, will be advantageous for Urbmon because, you can, as you can see, the flight path of the Mutalisks leads right into this protected natural expansion, where it's a little bit more out of the way for Urbmon. But one big feature of this map is just how you get these kind of Zerg eggs right here that provide a little bit of defense, a very wide ramp, and these kind of overmine cocoons where there's a little bit of creep where you can plop things in. And I believe there's minerals, you can see it on off the mini-map. There's minerals that plop there for a bit, but after some time you can actually build there to provide a little bit of a defense in other matchups. Um, also wanted to comment that we're probably seeing... Ooh, actually we are seeing something be, being built in here. I'm wondering if it's a... It looks like it is a creep colony. Um, on this side and on the opposite side we're seeing Urbmon build an evolution chamber extremely rare ZVZ and the question is is, is he building that evolution chamber to just intentionally flat nope canceling it where is he going with this okay so cancel there maybe he was just doing it I don't think he was doing it to free up supply because you can see he's actually sitting at 11 um, building a couple zerglings and that's where okay he moved he moved it up to the to the overmine cocoon right here and he's rebuilding it. So there it is, Evolution Chamber, I think. Yeah, that's what this building is here. So he's going Evolution Chamber, which suggests to me, if he's hiding it in particular, that he's going to go for uh, some sort of early upgrade with these Zerglings. And I actually like this play. Let's see if he actually... Yeah, he's going for a Weapon 1 uh, melee attack from the Zerglings. And I love this play from Urbmon in particular. He's going to have some challenge because of this hidden creep colony but this is a wide ramp and that is a lot of space to defend and if you notice how wide open the base is once you get in here second hatchery is going to be or sorry third hatchery is going to be placed in barcode zerg's base so he's also going a lot of zerglings but with weapons one that might give urban the overall edge particularly when it comes to breaching the ramp and currently there are only two zerglings and i don't think the creep colony has been upgraded to a sunken colony just yet so if urban actually wanted to press in he might be able to barcode zerg continuing to produce uh, additional zerglings to try to defend against this he is going to have the overall production advantage when it comes to just producing pure lings he's also got an extractor going down at the natural expansion urban is sticking just straight minerals getting his third hatchery so he can produce but keep in mind there is going to be a great deal of distance that urban needs to cover to really make these zerglings efficient speed upgrade finishing just now so third hatchery and keep in mind this is a perfect in <laughs> i actually like how the overmind cocoon takes us away a bit. Usually Zerg versus Zerg is a perfect information map, or a matchup, I should say, because you get overlords in each other's base, so you can generally see what's happening uh, more, quote-unquote, more perfectly. <clears throat> but with these overmind cocoons, you do end up with opportunities to do sneaky things like this. So I think what Urban's going to do is he's going to wait for the timing on that level one weapons attack, continue to build a lot of Zerglings, and then flood out of the base. However, I gotta assume Barcode Zerg sees something up, because he's, you gotta notice this, 
no gas here. No gas is being taken. And a fourth hatchery from Urbmon. So he's just going to go straight Zergling Flood. Three hatcheries. And really for Barcode to be able to resist this, what he needs to do is start producing a lot of Zerglings now. It looks like he is doing so. So he's got to read on this. He's continuing to harvest. He's going up to Larry. He's continuing to harvest gas. Once the... Mutalists are out. It's going to be very difficult for Urbmon. So Urbmon, basically, what I'm saying here is he's got a window where these Zerglings will be able to maybe get... I should figure out how to do the follow command with this eventually. I'll get there, guys. Um, eventually, the, the Zerglings are moving to position, but he's got a breach with this attack. Otherwise, he could be in a lot of trouble because Mutalists in the air beat Zerglings hands down every single time, right? Um, single Zergling actually slipping through. Urbmon with just a handful of Lings in position, but here comes the rest of that flood. So this is going to be one big attack on the front, and if Urbmon does not breach, it could spell really bad news for him because he's not going to have any anti-air to speak of, or if he is going to try to build anti-air, he's going to have to do it uh, with spore colonies, which is going to cost him drones in the interim. And he is way behind in the gas count as far as being able to just produce things in that in that field and in that arena. So moving up, he does have the level one weapons finished. I'm not sure I can get an accurate Zergling count. I think that's uh, control group and a half versus two control groups, but it is going up in a ramp. Plus the sunk colonies. Here are the attack moving in. Keep in mind, this is two sunken colonies because you got, I believe this one probably was upgraded in the background and it looks like Urban is not breaching with his level one weapons. Zergling's getting wiped out and barcode Zerg holds. More Zerglings coming in for a secondary attack. Is he going to be able to get through this time? It looks like he is able to breach through, but keep in mind that's three hatcheries worth of production with no distance to travel for the Zerglings uh, on the opposite side of the field. Sunken Colony gets taken out there. So they're working on that second Sunken Colony now. I'm sure Urban's like, wait, there's another Sunken Colony there. And he's going to have to back off with the rest of his Zerglings. And it looks like Barcode Zerg once again establishes the front lines, trying to get another Sunken Colony down. Urban moving with more Zerglings up, and you can see it's just pure Zergling flood, but I believe this attack is going to get repelled shortly because there's the Spire, and all it's going to take is one or two Mutalists to send these Zerglings home. Sunken Colony being built right now. Urban needs to get something accomplished here, continuing to press forward with those Zerglings. It looks like he is going to be able to get through with just a handful, though, and they're glitching out a little bit. The position isn't quite working for them. One Zergling makes it through, which is honestly... Oh man, it's going to get almost cleaned up by the drones itself. He's going to go ahead and go into the natural expansion, but Urbmon in a bad position here. First of all, he's behind in the overall drone count. Secondarily, he's behind in the tech count. There you can see the Mutalisks flooding in. The one advantage he does have is that level 1 weapons with the Zerglings are continuing to try to push in, get some additional drone kills, and I think that was a drone kill there. And Overlord is going to get taken out. This puts... Urban in a desperate situation. Moving up with additional Zerglings, though, on the front. And if you have enough Zerglings, sometimes you can just press straight past the Mutalisks exactly like that. Keep in mind, this is five Mutalisks, so they should be able to clean things up. But this will help him, hopefully, if he can micro it just right, be able to clean up the drone count and make that a little bit closer. And it looks like he is able to clean up, wow, most of the drones at the main. He's continuing to push more Zerglings in. The Mutalisks are still overhead. So Ur keep in mind, Urban's got to do as much as he can with the Zerglings here as those Mutalisks continuing to damage things. It looks like he's reduced the drone count. First of all, he's forced the drones to that natural inside protected natural expansion. This is too many Mutalisks at this stage for that uh, for the Zerglings to do anything further. But he has pushed Barcode Zerg. Ooh, going to continue to press in, see what he can get done here. Action happening absolutely everywhere. And Urban needs to dive directly to the natural expansion. He's trying to split... The focus here, go in, try to take out a spawning pool, try to take out those tech buildings, and split the focus of Barcode Zerg uh, while he's trying to clean up those Zerglings uh, back and forth here. More Zerglings continuing to press through and try to keep that drone count low while he establishes his own... Wow, he's already got another expansion up. I'm not even sure that he's mining gas. I'm going to take a look at... The, I'm going to have to break from this action for a moment. Still not mining gas. Still just going to continue to try to get it done with Zerglings. So Zergling's continuing to press through, going to continue to move back and forth. He does get the spawning pool taken care of. So it is just going to be, wow. So he can't even build sunken colonies at this stage. Barcode Zer Zerg cannot build sunken colonies. So it is going to be, wow, Zerglings versus Mutalisks. And he needs to keep that spire up. He needs to defend both the spire and the drones and split it somehow that way. It looks like the drones themselves trying to provide some defense. But the, wow, the sunk, <laughs> the, Mut the spire's down. I can't even talk here. The spire has been taken out. It is going to be pure drone defense and the Mutalisks that are already up in the air. And I'm almost wondering if Barcode Zerg might just want to sack everything that is in his main, produce as many drones as possible, get them in the defensive protective ring of his natural expansion, get as, 
uh, sunk con or a sorry a spawning pool back up and provide some defense from there. But Urban is turning this around through pure force of will and basically five hatcheries of Zerglings flooding in with that level one weapons upgrade. And the Zerglings continue. And this is this kind of uh, holds that old adage is sometimes more of a bat uh, of a less strong unit is better than just the better unit of fewer counts. I'm not articulating that well. You get what I'm saying, people. Erdmon gonna take this game through pure Zerglings alone, and this is the sort of thing you can see on his stream all the time to promote it. it. Doesn't always work out. I'm glad it worked out in this match, but it is seven drones versus fourteen. There's an immense amount of gas for Barcode Zerg, but he can't spend it. And wow, the entire main is wiped out. Still some drones mining here. The mutalists are just trying to hold overhead. And now the question is, is how does Erdmon want to close this out? Because he the ability to do the split attack, maybe he's just going to flood with just more Zerglings at this stage. He needs to be somewhat careful in doing so because the mutalists aren't going to have their attention split. So they are going to be able to take down Zergling after Zergling. He, looks like he's going to try to yeah take out any Overlord that is going to supply cap Erdmon which is going to reduce this flood a little bit, but Zerglings all over the natural now, and keep in mind, no sunken colony, nothing else, to clear this out, and there's the last hatchery, and Barcode Zerg cannot rebuild a hatchery at this stage, asking something in Korean, I don't, maybe someone can translate it for me in chat, but this now frees up the Mutalists to go try to take out Urban's base, Urban needs to kill this extractor. I think it, that's it. This extractor, and he wins. So more Zerglings pushing in. Can Urban take out the extractor to win this match on just weapons upgrade and pure Zerglings alone? At this stage, I would leave the drones for defense and like maybe le just leave a couple Mutalisks hovering over there and take the rest of the Mutalisks and start going to work because that is the only way to win at this stage. More Zerglings pushing through 94 health. Woof. Uh... This is it. This is the building that keeps Barcode Zerg alive. More Zerglings moving their way across. Mutalists trying to cut off the reinforcements flooding through. Drones trying to blockade the Zerglings moving their way across. And this is a desperate defense now for Barcode Zerg, but keep in mind, if he can somehow get these Mutalists freed, he might still be able to take this game, but Ermon sneaking through 17 health left! Only 17 health! Now the Mutalists starting to press forward. The drones, are they going to just be able to hold the ramp and block these Zerglings off? It looks like they're trying to press forward. No, they're not even attacking. Oh, my goodness. Just getting lost there. And the Mutalisk is diving into Urban's main. But I don't think that's going to be enough. Was there... Okay, where... Where is there... There's somewhere there's a building. There it is. GG. Never mind. That was the end of game. Crazy match. Only 12 minutes, but it felt like... Wow. Way more intense than that. Uh, 12.41 is the official count on that match. But this is the sort of stuff... This is why I love watching Urban. Uh, a little taste, I will say. A lot of his games are exactly like this. Um, he plays a lot of crazy ZVZ in particular. And he is a pretty quick player, honestly. And I think given an opportunity, he probably could go into some of the upper echelons. But uh, I think maybe not, though. Because I think, again, he's not one of those guys who's like, I'm going to take this super seriously. And he's one of those guys who's like, this is my game for fun. And I am going to just get some joy out of it. Uh, anyway, so check out his stream. It is linked below. Also, the le <laughs> I'm like Jayun does uh, from, from the previous cast. I'm like Jayun does uh, more defensive, disruptive build. Actually, the, the you know, I was discussing with it uh, him with it. He actually was debuting a build with that, where it was a two base all in. It is very difficult to tell these days because of the meta whether Protoss are going two base uh, all in, or whether they're going two base with a large army to just establish map control and take a third. And part of that is is just um, my lack of uh, knowledge as a caster being able to catch all that. But otherwise, he said it was a pretty good cast. But I'm going to also link the build that he executed there if you guys want to see it. He has amazing tutorial streams, so this is kind of a pass shout out to him. Really appreciate all of you guys uh, for listening. And I hope that this provides a little bit of joy for your day, a little bit of energy. And yeah, have a great day, everybody. Thanks for listening.